Hello students, welcome to lecture 31 of the online course on photonic crystals, fundamentals and applications. Today's course will be discussing about designing a mirror, waveguide and a cavity based on photonic crystals. So here is the lecture outline, we will briefly introduce the agenda for this particular lecture and then we will be taking up an example to design a mirror, then a waveguide and then a cavity using photonic crystal slabs. So, in the um, beginning, we have already seen that, you know, couple of theoretical tools that allows us to understand the properties of photonic crystals. Now, extensive effort has also been devoted for understanding how photonic crystals can reflect and trap light and these effects of uh, reflecting and trapping light actually gives rise to the devices like mirrors and resonant cavities and when you are able to trap light along a corridor where light can be transported from one place in the circuit to another place that is where the waveguides are formed. So these components are basically um, important and they are valuable because of their unique properties which are significantly different from those of the unstructured materials. So, if you consider conventional crystals, they do not have all these uh, exciting properties okay, that can be easily tuned by just changing the structure or some parameters or by introducing some defects into them. So, when you move towards integrated circuits, the important work would be to combine you know the different components together something like mirrors waveguides and cavities all needs to be integrated so we will consider in this particular lecture okay a slightly different question we'll not handle the integration part we'll first go and look into the fact that how do you design each of these components from photonic crystals okay so, let us first take up this particular example of designing a mirror. So, you know the basic principles of operation in this case. Okay? So, there has been a history of extensive research on photonic crystals, particularly you know that leverages the photonic band gap okay, to trap photons with let within the lattice defects at uh, specific operating wavelengths. Okay, where the light propagation is basically prohibited. So, that is where the photonic band gap comes into the picture. Now, if you actually shine light which belongs to the wavelength or frequencies of the photonic band gap of a photonic crystal, that light is not allowed to enter the crystal. So, where does light go? It will simply get reflected. And if you remember, when we actually discussed about generation of photonic band gap, we considered the band gap to be in complete band gap means for all the values of wave vector k. That means in any direction, if you uh, shine light, the crystal is not going to let that light propagate through it. It is going to be rejected or reflected back. Okay? So, that is where we go to photonic crystal slabs. Now, why we go to photonic crystal slabs? Because of the complexity in fabricating 3D photonic crystals. Okay? So, photonic crystal slabs are basically 2D structure with finite height. So, those are much more easier to fabricate using the standard microelectronic processes. Okay? And we have also seen some advancements in optical micro cavities in photonic crystal slabs that have been developed. So, this kind of uh, cavities, they are basically demonstrating high quality factor and they, they can be very, very effective one, but they will suffer from radiative loss. It means the mode can will basically leak out if you do not uh, design them properly. So, there are a couple of important aspects in the designing. Okay? So, there is a challenge with this radiative losses. So, radiative losses in photonic crystal slabs occur when certain components of the k vector distribution in the reciprocal space extends 
or you can say exceed the light line okay so whenever it goes into the radiating zone okay that means it can couple to the radiative mode so that will lead to losses okay and that has to be mitigated through careful design of the micro cavities so one method would be to use the slow block modes okay so that's another strategy for photon confinement okay so where you can use the slow block modes so these are basically the optical modes with very uh, low group velocities okay so that leads to minimal uh, lateral radiative losses and that enables applications something like you know low threshold in plane emitting lasers so in towards collaborative and innovative configurations you can think of uh, some novel designs something like vertical fab fabri perot cavity configuration so these are also useful in enhancing the light confinement and the overall device performance another aspect is design focus at the gamma point so if you remember uh, this photonic uh, band gap structure these are the important points in the brilliant zone right so mirrors are specifically designed for operation at gamma point so that is the point where your k parallel vector is basically zero okay and it will facilitate the normal uh, incidence operation okay now this point being a highly symmetry uh, location where the corresponding frequencies are basically above the light line so this is the uh, light line okay and that allows so you can see here this particular uh, frequency is basically above the light line so that allows for the combination of uh, radiated losses with uh, low lateral expansion velocity in this particular slab so let us first go uh, into this particular diagram so this this tells you the basic principle of operation of photonic crystal mirrors okay sometimes we will be referring them as pcm also in this particular lecture okay so this happens when uh, the couple that is omega k parallel of the incident light will match with a block mode dispersion diagram of the crystal uh, above the light line okay and that is the case where you know the light will be reflected okay so for finite size incident beam that you can see here this uh, ellipsoid or ellipse shown here in red that shows the finite beam size okay so that shows you that the best reflectivity coefficients are basically obtained around you know gamma point that is when k parallel is equal to 0 so that is where you are basically here right so this is the incident light and this is how the reflection will take place so under normal incidence illumination with a wavelength matching that of the eigen wavelength which you found at gamma point okay the incident energy could couple to the photonic crystal block mode okay so that is where um, the coupling takes place so the photons in the block mode have basically two pathways they can radiate uh, back outside the crystal causing constructive interference in reflection and thus uh, destructive interference in transmission alternatively they can also escape uh, laterally from the illuminated area and that those are counted as lateral losses so these are the two pathways or means by which photons in block mode can actually go so this gives us an estimate of the kinetic constant and the reflectivity so the behavior of photons are basically governed by two kinetic constants so you can take tau c which is basically the coupling time constant of the guided block modes to radiated modes and tau g 
this is the time constant for lateral photon that escapes out of the illuminated area. So, if you consider the reflectivity of the photon crystal mirror that will directly relate to this ratio of tau c by tau g. So, if you want to achieve a high efficient mirror for narrow beams, okay, what you want to do? You want to minimize this particular ratio. So, that will ensure that rapid, rapid coupling of the guided photons back to the lateral modes happen, radiated modes happen before they could escape laterally. Okay. So, you are actually able to get more reflection. So, that is how you can get good mirrors. Okay. So, high contrast, high index contrast photon crystal mirrors uh, can actually um, enhance the coupling rate to the radiated modes. So, that means you will require a lower tau c. Okay. And that will also reduce the photon mean group velocity that means you will have higher tau g and these two cases will make you know promising a recipe for efficient mirror design okay now let us quantify the time constant tau g and the group velocity vg okay so around this point uh, gamma point a parabolic approximation could be applied to the dispersion characteristics Okay, and you can write omega k parallel as omega naught plus half alpha k parallel square. So, alpha here is basically the curvature of the band okay, that is near this uh, gamma point. Okay. So, you can see from here also. Okay. So, each in plane wave vector component that is k parallel of the block mode matches with one of the incident waves okay so what you can obtain from here the mean parallel wave vector of the block mode is then inversely proportional to the lateral size of the incident beam so that is another important point so if you consider s capital s to be your incident beam area so, you can say that k parallel average is basically 1 over square root of s. Okay? So, that is how they are related. So, the mean group velocity of the block mode you can express as vg average will be d omega by dk parallel. So, you are here you are considering basically the value when uh, it is k parallel average and that comes out to be alpha over square root of s. So, finally, the time related to the lateral escape of the photons out of this uh, illuminated area can be given by tau g that is s over alpha. Okay? So, these are the important parameters that can tell you that you want the radiation to be reflected first before it could escape to the lateral modes. So, now we can estimate the spectral bandwidth and the photon lifetime. So, the spectral bandwidth delta omega of the reflector would be inversely proportional to the lifetime of the block mode photons inside the illuminated area and they are both related, related to both tau c and tau g by this 1 over tau equals 1 over tau c plus 1 over tau g. Okay? And if you consider highly efficient mirrors as we mentioned that this time is much much smaller than tau g. Okay? That means the bandwidth will be mainly governed by tau c and it will be delta omega which is inverse of tau c. So, a highly efficient and compact photonic crystal mirror will exhibit therefore necessarily a large reflection bandwidth because you want your tau c to be small. So, that way you get a large bandwidth as well. Now, what are the requirements for optimal coupling? So, efficient coupling between a normal incident beam and a photonic crystal mirror block mode requires matching of the electric and magnetic field symmetries. Okay? So, 
here we can see the basic principles of this photon crystal mirrors okay are applied by you know in order to get a uh, broadband mirror in the near infrared so as you can see we have considered here indium phosphide air photon crystal mirror okay so it is basically a indium phosphide uh, and air one dimensional grating okay so you can see here in the figure the membrane thickness is uh, h which is 255 nanometer and the lattice period capital lambda is 1.15 micron and you can see the air filling fraction is around 65 percent so you can see the structural parameters from here okay now this is studied under t polarization with the incident electric field being parallel to the slits okay so now we can study the band structure and the resonance mode so the band structure basically reveals two modes that you can see here the first one is t1 mode okay this one okay and it can be seen as at lambda 1 equals uh, 1.24 micron and the other mode is this blue color one which is t2 that is 1.84 micron and these are located at the gamma point as you can see okay so these are the different points so this is gamma this is x okay and what is important here so if you see this is basically the design that we are considering i have also already mentioned what are the structural parameters now the other things that you can see here are the reflection characteristics and the simulation findings okay so rcwa analysis this is basically rigorous coupled uh, wave uh, analysis that has this is a method of simulation we will not cover that in this particular course but this is a numerical technique that can allow you to calculate the reflection from this uh, particular structure and it demonstrates that uh, you are getting broadband reflection due to the spectral overlap of the two block mode resonances okay so if you modify so you can actually see from here okay so this is for the filling fraction of 65 percent and when you change it to a uh, filling fraction air filling fraction basically of 75 percent this is how the resonances will change so when you say air filling fraction is 75 percent it means your uh, indium phosphide slabs are actually getting uh, narrower right so at the normal air filling fraction of 65 percent the reflection spectrum is basically characterized by two distinct maxima that can actually have uh, almost 100 percent reflectivity right and this occurs at 1.4 and 1.6 micron okay so you can see there are two um, maxima so one is at 1.4 another is uh, 1.6 so they are slightly offset from the resonance uh, eigen wavelength so ideally they should have been this ones so what is the main reason for the reflection it is basically constructive interference between the reflected waves from each block wave uh, resonance that occurs at intermediate wavelength okay and this is basically due to uh, opposite z parity of the t1 and t2 mode so if you see that t1 is basically z odd okay and uh, t2 is basically z even so here you can see this is uh, t2 and this one is t1 so this is uh, plane wave expansion method this is fddd method this again is from this method and what what they are pl plotting they are basically plotting different components of the electric and magnetic field vectors okay so that you can see this odd even parity okay so if the block modes have uh, similar symmetry so destructive interference would uh, result in a dip in the reflectivity between the two resonances rather than giving you a flat reflection okay so the peak reflectivity at each wavelength is basically influenced 
by excitation of both block modes while they still have some differing contributions. So the reflectivity minimum maximum that you see at lambda equals 1.4 micron is basically coming from the T1 mode okay this one and uh, the other one that you see at 1.6 okay is basically coming from T2 though they, they, they are saying it is predominantly okay that particular mode there is a slight difference in this resonance peak and the eigen mode uh, wavelength so you can understand that these are not purely T1 and T2 configuration but predominantly these modes are only creating this maximum. And another important point is that the two reflectivity peaks are all, almost equal in the amplitude. Okay? So this equivalence is mainly due to that T2 mode having a lower tau g okay? and uh, that you can see from the higher band curvature okay? for the T2 but as compared uh, to the first case that is T1 okay? but it has got a lower tau c okay? that means it corresponds to a higher spectral bandwidth and that you can also see in this particular case and the ratio tau c by tau uh, the ratio tau c by tau g okay, is very critical for indicating the lateral losses okay? and this remains roughly constant for both block modes despite there are differences. Okay? So this is how you can actually obtain uh, very efficient mirrors based on photonic crystal slabs. Okay? So that is one practical example. So now we will move on to designing a waveguide. So we have been discussing this uh, for some time that we can introduce a line defect in a photonic crystal slab and uh, we can uh, propagate or you can, you can actually allow a wavelength that falls within the photonic band gap of the uh, substrate or the surrounding medium slab and allow incident that particular wavelength into the defect waveguide and that will be happily propagating through it without any losses. So let us look into that into more details. So we will analyze the band structure of square and rectangular lattice photonic crystals and that will help us to identify the optimal design parameters something like what should be the interhole spacing, the hole radius and the slab thickness. So, what is the impact of finite slab thickness because we are considering a uh, photonic crystal slab as I mentioned that these are easy to fabricate right. So, unlike 2D models finite uh, thickness slabs can support higher order vertical oscillations of light modes. So, excessive thickness in that case may lead to closing of the band gap making the slab thickness to be a very important parameter that you need to optimize. Okay? So, the structure that we will first analyze in a silicon slab, uh, we will consider the structure pattern with uh, square or triangular lattice of holes uh, and surrounded by air okay? like this. And then if you consider the thickness of this silicon slab to be uh, around D equals 0 0.55 A and you can consider uh, the radius of the holes to be equal to 0 0.4 A. Okay? And we consider the refractive index of silicon to be 3.5. Okay? So what are the other parameters that you see in this two figures? So this one is basically for the 2D square lattice of holes and this one is for the 2D triangular lattice of holes. So A here basically shows A1 and A2 basically showing you the lattice vectors okay? and B1 and B2 are basically the reciprocal lattice vectors which are also mentioned. So here just for a change because this design has been taken from this particular journal, there the authors have used different kind of notations for 
the points so of the irreducible brillouin zone so they they are calling this as gamma m and x okay and for this case they are calling it as uh, gamma x and j okay so this is slightly different from the traditional convention that we used earlier in this course but for the discussion in this lecture because they they have calculated the band diagrams based on those uh, values so you can actually see okay so gamma x m so gamma x m gamma so that is how you traverse the entire brilliant zone boundary here also you can do that gamma x j gamma okay so what they have done they have calculated the band diagram of the eigen modes of this silicon slab which are basically perforated with 2d lattice of holes in this case this is a square lattice and this is a triangular lattice okay the slab is of finite thickness as you can see it is uh, uh, d equals 0.55 a and the hole radius is 0.4 a that is the inter uh, where a is basically the inter hole spacing right so what you see here the even modes are basically represented with circles okay and the odd modes are shown with stars okay so just to remind you what is this x x is this basically discuss about uh, different directions in the reciprocal lattice and what is the y axis that is giving you the normalized um, frequency okay or you can say uh, normalized wavelength a by lambda okay where lambda will be the wavelength in air or vacuum you can see the solid lines here these are basically the light line dispersion relation for the photons okay uh, in air uh, where the momentum is normalized to 1 on the x axis okay and then what you can also see here the modes are occurring at uh, frequencies above this uh, line will be prone to leak the energy into air and those are basically the leaky modes which are causing the primary loss mechanism for the waveguides so above the light line if there is any mode okay that will be able to couple to the continuum as you can see these are basically continuum of uh, radiative modes means for every frequency there will be a mode that is supported so it's a continuum okay and then you will actually not get complete band gap okay so what you also see by comparing the, the two cases of square and triangular is that the triangular lattice can basically feature a wider band gap than the so here you can if you look into the circles so here here is a narrow band gap but here is pretty wide okay so this uh, lines and this line so you can see the gap it's pretty pretty wide band gap okay and that is because of the greater symmetry and a smoother brilliant zone right so if you remember that uh, this has got much bet higher symmetry than the square lattice okay and that is why you know uh, it gives a more robust option for making photonic crystal waveguide okay and especially by considering the fabrication tolerances that might close the band gap in the case of square structure lattice because this this gap is very narrow this is wide so even if something goes wrong during fabrication you will still get band gap okay if you consider this one fine so i think we have already discussed this we we have already seen that uh, the even modes are basically uh, the T like modes and the odd modes are basically the TM like modes of the photonic crystal structures and they are basically shown for both uh, square and triangular lattice right and here is a table that shows the parameter or you can say figure of merit of, of the two samples of photonic crystals so this is the square lattice it is it is giving a band gap of 0 0.031 okay a by lambda okay so here you can see the starting and the end uh, values but here you can see it's a much wider band gap okay and uh, mid gap frequency here is 0 0.33 here it is 0 
three six five okay and these are the lattice parameters so a and then in terms of uh, a you are getting r the whole radius and also you are getting the thickness okay so you can see that you will still require slightly thicker slab in the case of uh, triangular lattice and this is how you know the fabricated square lattice waveguide will look like okay so this is the cross section of the fabricated square lattice waveguide that is suspended in air okay and this basically shows when you look it from the end okay so this is the view of end on okay so the reflection symmetry planes here can also be seen which are basically this uh, sigma x y okay so that is the vertical symmetry plane okay and then you have this one this is called sigma y z that is the lateral symmetry plane so why these planes are important that actually helps you to identify those odd even modes that we have discussed earlier as well so this design parameters that you have discussed that actually gives you a band gap centered around wavelength of 1.5 micron okay and using this table you can see that the latest constant is uh, 496 and 547 nanometer in the case of square and triangular lattice fine so with that if you introduce a line defect by removing a line of hole holes so you what you are doing you are removing this line line of holes so you can actually these are missing holes so you can actually represent that them by white circles okay and this is how the waveguide will look like for the square lattice and for the uh, triangular lattice okay so this defects will act like donor impurities they will pull the air band modes towards the band gap to form a defect state and that will allow energy to propagate exclusively along the defect line and effectively guiding light while suppressing uh, lateral and vertical propagation okay so what are the structural and propagating propagative characteristics so if you see the waveguide extending along the uh, y-axis in the 3d space okay uh, this possesses a uh, discrete translational symmetry which we understood already because of the lattice periodicity where the each unit cell of the waveguide has got a width of a and this configuration ensures that the propagation is confined to the line defect with lateral and vertical movements which are basically inhibited by the photonic band gap so it cannot actually go out uh, in on the sides okay and um, the position below the light line so vertical movement is because it cannot actually uh, couple to any mode that is leaky mode so that will be propagating through this defect only so here are some analysis of uh, the square lattice waveguides and uh, for the t like modes and this is for tm like modes so these are the dispersion uh, diagram uh, for vertically even that is t like uh, modes and this is for vertically odd so you can see these are the vertically even ones this is how the vertically odd ones look like okay and uh, both these are for the square uh, lattice okay so these are showing the field distribution for different modes so this is for e2 e3 and e4 and here these are like tm like of like modes so these are the odd modes o1 o2 and so on and these are the points in the line so they are plotting it from 0 to pi by a okay and this is the propagation constant so the, you have marked this point that is your gamma and this point is basically x okay the same thing you can do for the triangular lattice okay so here you can see that these are again t like modes so these are uh, having vertically even symmetry these are having vertically odd symmetry okay and you can also see the distribution of e1 e2 e3 e4 e5 modes okay and here you can see o1 or two modes similarly this for the triangular lattice they have marked the 
points here gamma j x and so on right and one another important thing if you look here the solid line that you see is basically marking the light line in each case that has got a slope of uh, one okay so it's basically um, from here zero this is basically pi by a so this point is uh, pi by a comma 0 0.5 so this is how you can mark it okay so this is also it will go to 0 0.5 here it is 0 0.4 so it, it looks like that okay so ideally all of them should go to um, at pi by 4 it should go to 0 0.5 right so the leaky modes in this case you can see the leaky modes are not shown in the case of uh, tm like modes okay and uh, here you can see in the insets okay um, they are basically showing you the field patterns of uh, the magnetic and uh, electric field components in the middle of the slab that is basically the jet slice and in this case uh, the tm like modes o1 and o2 okay for them the distribution of ez component along the cross section of the waveguide is also shown okay so you can see this ones okay so the field profile for o2 is uh, basically taken near the cutoff and therefore the field penetrates into the photon crystal and that can be seen uh, from the inset okay so this we have already discussed so what else you can see from these diagrams the direction of light propagation and how do you analyze the modes so the light propagates along the gamma x direction in the reciprocal space in the case of uh, square lattice so this is gamma and this is uh, x okay you can see here and given the waveguide's periodicity in the y direction the ky values will range from 0 to pi by a and that is why not all uh, detected modes are guided some would correspond to the modes of the photon crystal slab that either exist in the gray dark region okay um, those are basically the modes of the photonic crystal slab or they will be above the light line in the light gray region okay where they will basically leak out into air as leaky modes so the white regions that you see that is where uh, the 3d localization of light occurs in the waveguide and that those are basically free from interference from any sort of photon crystal modes so the guiding mechanism for the modes situated uh, below all photonic crystal modes something like you know modes e1 o1 and o2 okay so they they basically perceive the silicon slab perforated with 2d photonic crystals uh, lattice not as a photonic band gap material but they will basically see it as a effective medium okay which has got a refractive index of n effective and that is lower than the effective index of silicon okay core that means it is lower than 3.5 so these modes are basically guided via total internal reflection and they are basically unaffected by the uh, periodicity of the photon crystal so that allows for unrestricted propagation uh, constant ky or beta you can say okay so the here the um, it is not depending on the band gap it is rather you know depending on the total internal reflection phenomena and that is why there is no restriction on the uh, propagation constant in this case so what are the strategies for enhancing the coupling efficiency so if you want to improve the coupling efficiency okay you have to eliminate the leaky modes in the frequency range of the targeted guided modes okay that is very important and this could be achieved by adjusting the r by a ratio of the photonic crystal lattice uh, by narrowing the width of the waveguide okay both of which will help to exclude the undesired leaky modes so the first thing what could be the mode method for single mode regulation narrowing the uh, waveguide width 
will also push some modes back into the air band because they will not be supported within the waveguide. So that basically reduces the number of guided modes and potentially that increases the cutoff uh, frequency for TM like modes while retaining some of the T like modes and that will help you achieve single mode kind of operation. So that is how you can actually make single mode to propagate with high efficiency in the waveguides. Now we went to the next and the last topic of this lecture that is define, designing a cavity in the photonic crystals. So let us look into the quality factor of a cavity mode and its reciprocal space. So we could derive an analytical relation between the near field pattern that we see in the cavity mode and its quality factor. And why Q is important because it actually tells you how well the cavity is able to confine light and you can define Q as omega okay, energy by P that is basically mode energy divided by the uh, loss. Okay. So, in this case omega is basically the angular frequency of the confined mode. Okay. U is basically giving you the mode energy that can be calculated as integration half epsilon uh, e square plus omega mu uh, sorry epsilon e square plus mu h square and you integrate over uh, the volume and then if you consider the in plane and out of plane uh, mode loss mechanisms in the 2D photonic crystals of the finite depth separately you will be able to estimate P as uh, P parallel plus P perpendicular. So, you can actually write them in terms of Q as 1 by Q equals 1 by Q parallel plus 1 by Q perpendicular. Now, wha what is that? Okay. So, how do you estimate this confinement? So, in plane and out of plane confinement. Okay. So, in plane confinement uh, you can actually take this particular uh, diagram and see how we are basically estimating the radiated power and Q perpendicular for the known near field at a surface S. Okay? So, the in plane confinement as I mentioned is enhanced by using distributed Bragg reflected DBRs and they can be increased by adding photonic crystal uh, layers allowing for high quality factors that is Q parallel within the photonic designs. Okay, and the outer plane confinement that is basically influencing okay, that uh, relies on the modal K distribution and it requires precise tuning of the photonic crystal defect for optimization. So, you can do finite difference time domain analysis for computing the near field pattern at a surface S that is above the photonic crystal slab and that will provide insight about the out of plane uh, radiation losses. Okay. So, the total uh, radiated power P okay, um, that is the loss okay, or you can say radiated loss that can be calculated like this. So, the total time average power radiated into the half space above the surface S so, you can refer to this diagram how that integration is calculated. So, P is considered to be integral uh, from 0 to pi by 2 okay, and then again integral 0 to 2 pi d theta d phi sin theta and then k. So, if you consider the radiated power per solid or per, per unit solid angle that is k um, that has uh, you know kx and ky. And this uh, radiative power is derived from the 2D Fourier transform of Hz and Ez okay, at the surface S. So, this is how you can calculate that. So, K you can obtain from the 2D Fourier transform of the electric and magnetic field vectors along the z direction. Their eta is the free space impedance, okay, lambda is the wavelength in air k parallel and k z are basically 
in plane and out of plane components okay and they are calculated using the angular definitions in the coordinate system now you can also find out the same similar formulation for out of plane loss right so the total out of plane radiation loss can be calculated through an integral over the light cone and that basically simplifies the understanding of the radiation dynamics above the photonic crystal slab so you can compute p equals this okay and here again you are using the 2d fourier transform okay of e z and e z so this is similar to this one okay but then you are integrating over uh, this cases where the k parallel is less than equals k okay so this is where uh, it will be restricted and this formula provides a straightforward method to calculate the quality factor q for a given mode uh, focusing particularly on the t like modes where hz is basically dominant okay and that will determine the uh, quality trends now the design figure of merits of uh, optical cavities is also very important so what are the important uh, figure of merits the first thing is maximal q by v that we have seen so this different figure of merits will be important for different applications something like if you consider spontaneous uh, emission rate enhancement you will see that uh, maximal q by v ratio is needed for the parcel effect for non-linear optical effects you basically want optimal q square by v ratio uh, and so on so now once you have understood what is the equation for p what is the equation for u you can also find out what is your q that is the quality factor okay so this is that expression so what is the application of this expression in photonic research first thing is that it gives you a theoretical explanation for q factor because this equation facilitates the investigation of the theoretical limits of the cavity's quality factor and also the relationship with its mode volume that allows deeper understanding of the photonic structures so here also you can see a comparison of the q factors which are basically obtained from the equation a and that is basically the red one and the blue one is basically uh, the FDTT simulation and you can see that they are pretty close to each other right so you can get a comparable results so this uh, kind of mat matching validates that you know this particular equation is a reliable measure uh, of the radiative properties and basically can support the theoretical design process and rapid optimization of the cavity parameters so with that um, we will try to conclude so while designing high quality factor photonic crystal cavities we will follow the methods like first you consider designing a two dimensional photonic crystal slab okay you demonstrate the effectiveness of this method for designing exceptionally high quality factors something like greater than 10 to the power 6 with very minimal mode volumes okay the mode volume is basically lambda by n whole cube okay so that is how you can actually get very good q by v ratio okay we have also seen that there are analytical approach and um, this method is purely analytical you can find more uh, details about this in this particular journal paper it's called general recipe for designing uh, photonic crystal cavities so this is the open access optic express journal so you can download this paper and read their work so they actually give a detailed recipe of designing very high quality factor photonic crystal cavities and few important thing is that you do not need to run simulations all the time this particular method is purely analytical so you can actually obtain the key parameters such as out of plane radiative losses by doing a simple computation single step okay so this efficiency accelerates the evolution of q factors across variety of cavity designs 
without running numerical simulations and okay you can also go for you know optimal mode placement to ensure minimal losses so why why this is important for achieving high quality um, cavities with least radiative loss it is important to center the fourier transform mode pattern at the extremes of the brillouin zone and positioning it as far as possible from the light cone okay so that will ensure that it is not going to you know leak out so that will optimize the performance and it is also minimize the energy leakage from the cavity so with that we will conclude this lecture and we will start the discussion of temporal couple mode theory fundamentals in the next lecture so if you have got any queries or doubts you can always email to me mention uh, photonic crystals and the lecture number in the subject line thank you mm -hmm.